and welcome to Horror Rewind. This is Kelly Florence. And I'm Meg Hofdahl. And today we're talking about Relic. Meg, I think I remember seeing this trailer and being excited to see it in the theater. Well, of course, it didn't come out in the theater um, in 2020 because movies haven't been in the theater in a long time. But we each had the opportunity. I, I think I rented it on Prime. What, how did you watch it? Yeah, I rented it on Prime. And yeah, I don't even remember seeing a trailer for it. I just started hearing a little hubbub about it. So I do remember seeing a trailer. Um, and I don't know, maybe it wasn't supposed to be in the theater. But what is time? I don't remember when anything happens anymore. Um, this is 92% on Rotten Tomatoes. And it's directed by um, Natalie Erica James. And this is like our kind of horror movie. Because it's got this really subtle, interesting setup that's based in reality, but then things are just a little bit strange. Yeah, I, I'm i going to warn you, there are a couple things I'm going to complain about, but overall, it definitely, I love the atmosphere. I loved, exactly, I love this idea that it, it is rooted in reality, but then like the reality starts to sort of like wither away yeah yeah i this moment it, i she it's like right in the beginning i assume it's been a while since i watched this but there's a subtle person rising next to the christmas tree like behind her oh. it's just it's like icky because she's like standing there naked and right away there's like this whole jumble of thoughts because you just you see like this christmas tree and then there's grandma but grandma's naked and then yeah there's like the shadowy feeling like there's a presence there and um and that's setting up things really well yeah and quickly like that's literally the first shot what was your first note like what what made you start to think about this movie and, and uh, figure it out figure it out well, uh <laughs> you know like figure out like where what sort of journey we were going to be taken on. Yeah. I mean, there's a shot when I'm just going to keep calling her Emily Mortimer. Cause I don't, I don't know her character's name when she comes in and the fruit is dead in the bowl. And she comes in with her daughter. And I was like, I love this because it's bad either way. Either your mom is like dead. And of course they go up and you think maybe she's dead under the blanket. Right. Or she's crazy and she's just letting, like, fruit, you know. What ends up happening, of course, is that she's gone missing for a while. And, I mean, that is just creepy on of itself. And also, again, there's a very real feeling because this is reality. You see it on the news. Like, uh, people who have dementia, like, wander away and things like that. So you still sort of there's this foreboding which i love this foreboding music and this feeling that there's something else happening and they use dreams to sort of um show that and then grandma comes back and she's acting funny i mean th you don't know where you're going yeah yeah i i felt like it was going to be a haunted house Maybe, because I didn't know either. Um, and then I thought maybe she's possessed by something or, um, you know, there's something in the house. Because, like, we see some, like, a bag move and, like, a closet door moves. Like, things aren't moving on their own. So it's like, is, the, is it, are there ghosts? Like, what's going on? And um, the, like, the icky thing, which is also, like, this is, I feel like it's rooted in reality, at least for a while. Because, like, we all have to deal with elder elderly and aging parents or relatives and these houses that are falling apart and so there's these weird stains um on the walls and they sort of look like the the rotting that's happening to gran's skin and so it's like she's almost become part of the house and it's like it's an allegory for like how maybe we could stay in one place too long or it's time we know it's time to go like maybe we shouldn't be hanging on so long to things or time i don't know i like that I, I definitely – so this is – I saw a lot of the allegorical ways of things where it was like – to me, I kind of saw it as like age mm -hmm. and age is like a disease that we all are not going to escape. I mean, if we're lucky, we want to have it, right? Um, and I was sort of 
thinking about culturally how we treat elderly compared to other cultures and how we sort of leave them in their house and and let them rot so to speak and at the same time I never felt like I really got the practical of it like I understood the allegory but I was struggling a little bit more with like what did it all I, I and I don't like having everything answered for me either so I was sort of like balanced on this like what is happening yeah so tell me is it haunted is it the house like I know there's the cabin and like the grandpa died out there and stuff or great grandpa but what what is actually happening? I know. That's the thing. What is actually happening? They mentioned that window and that the window was taken from that house and put into this house. So is it a curse? That's what I was thinking too. I'm like, is it a curse? And then at the very end, she has it on her. But again, that's allegorically like age, right? So the few little like things that kind of caught me I was maybe, maybe I was just feeling too deconstructive while I was watching this movie. But one thing was I felt like they kept having Gran do something creepy and then the next scene she did something creepy and so on and so forth. But I didn't feel a building up or a progression. I, I just felt like it was like here and it was scary. Don't get me wrong. It was it was something creepy, like trying to like rip the ring off of the granddaughter or different things like that. But I didn't feel like an actual progression of plot. Like I feel like you could have taken all those tableaus and like shuffled them up and they could have happened in a different order, if that makes any sense. Absolutely. And I, I get that. And I think you explaining it uh, puts into words sort of how I was feeling, like the tone was so similar throughout. And of course it escalates when the granddaughter's like crawling through the house and you know, you're feeling it. But at the same time, it's like, but why? You know, what, give me something. Yeah. And I mean, obviously I like, I love anything that has to do with like a secret hidden room. Um, so I love that whole idea that she like went into that side of the house. And apparently that's where Gran was, I'm assuming when she went missing, she was in that side of the house, I guess. Um, so I, I liked that aspect, but again, it wasn't until we got there and it just felt like it was like this happened and then this happened and then this happened and it was like, well, okay. And then the other thing I, <clears throat> excuse me, I felt a little having issue with is I felt like I never really got to know the characters. Like I felt like the mom was obviously like a workaholic and kind of on the colder end and the daughter sort of rebelled against that but like I didn't have any like warm fuzzy feelings about either of them or and you don't even necessarily have to have that but I just didn't feel anything unique or like something about them that I cared about specifically does that make sense yeah I I think I think that's right and uh compared to um a movie we recently talked about host even though we were with those characters much less time and and it's significantly less if you consider how many more characters we had to get to know. I feel like I know them better or got to know them better than these three women. Yeah, I just, I don't know. I felt like they were archetypes. It was like mom is workaholic, daughter is this, gran, you know, is of the old world. And obviously you feel the tension. I mean, there this movie is sort of in the vein of hereditary. You can feel that like mother-daughter um, at issue. But... They're just, it just, they felt like a little bit like stereotypes and not fully fleshed out characters to me. Yeah, I think that's fair. Um, some of the creepy moments that I will mention that, you know, we, we've referred to, um, there's a figure standing behind the mom and Gran um, is actually facing forward with her hair over her face. I don't re even remember oh. like who it was, but that was gross. Well, the way they shot it, it looked like her back. Yeah. So then when she started moving her head a certain way, then you re then she moved the curtain of hair and you realized it was her front. It was so creepy. That was really well done. That one got me. And then um, just like the real horrific things like about dementia, she keeps calling her different names. You mentioned the ring. Um, she is whistling into the closet and she's and she says, this is how it got in. Like what got in? Um, there's breathing, a breathing noise under the bed. Um, the motion light is coming on outside, seemingly on its own. 
Gran, remember when she's outside and she's eating pictures? Like, there's a lot of weird things that are unsettling. Oh, yeah. There's so many things. I really liked how she had this candle making she was doing all the time. And they were gorgeous. Um, But it was always just like the motion of it was kind of weird. And like, you didn't know what she was quite doing over there. Um, I'm looking up because she said, I'm going to make you a mallow. Do you know what that means? No. I'm trying to find because, you know, this is Australian. Uh, no. Well, never mind. If anybody knows what it means, I could only find that it's like a kind of weed, but, um, she's not making her weed, but she said, I'm going to make you a mallow and I wrote it down, but then I never looked it up. So now I'm doing my research now. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what that means. Um, there's the scene where the mom goes to check out a retirement home for Gran and has an ocean view. Like that sounds pretty good to me. Um, but I was also thinking about how... Reti- the phrase retirement home is a euphemism, you know, for really it's the place you're going to die. And I know, I mean, there are a certain generation of people or a different or a culture of people who want to stay in their own home as long as they can. And or even if they can't, they want to still try. And it's just, like you said, culturally, how do we view growing older and getting older? And I mean, so there's some, I, I understand and I appreciate the real things that they're, they're tackling with this. But at the same time, I really wanted some sort of clearer through line of, of horror. Like, I don't know. Does that make sense? Yeah. No, that's definitely, I was, I was feeling some sort of like, again, I don't want things necessarily explained to me, but I just wanted a little more, well, for, okay, so. Well, first of all, before I get into it, I do want to say I really like what you were saying about like staying in a house too long and it and I cuz I was looking at generally more like just aging, but I love how you sort of compared it to that and and that mold almost like getting on her from the house. I love that. But what was I going to say? Oh, so when we get to the end and she starts peeling off her skin and she's this figure beneath, while she's peeling it off, I'm like, "Okay, maybe you know, because your your brain is trying to like explain it to yourself. So I said to myself, maybe she's some sort of creature, and she has like assumed human form, and this is actually like their family. Are they're all this? And like when they die, like they slough off their like skin or something. But I don't think that's what was happening. But but as it was happening, I was like trying to justify it in my mind and like. Maybe it's kind of fun that there was no answer there, but at the same time, it kind of just left me feeling, I don't know. I, I like your explanation. I think that is a fun idea. I, too, trying to justify or not not justify, but explain to my brain. I'm like, well, maybe um, she's like, this is how it got in. Maybe she is possessed by something and that's what she became. I know, though, that it's supposed to be a metaphor for aging. I mean, I assume. But you know but it's okay to have metaphors and allegories but it still has to be a coherent story that makes sense like it should still be like well yeah she's a demon or you know what i mean like you can't you can't base the whole plot on the metaphor right so i think that's where it feels shaky and we're having a hard time okay yeah i get it what else did you want to talk about about this movie well, one aspect that we've talked about a lot is this idea of children not being believed. And Gran originally said, like, I feel uncomfortable in this house. People are, like, chasing after me or whatever. And um, her daughter didn't believe her. And I just thought it was interesting, something we don't think about a lot. But I think we don't really count the elderly's um view of things as well as we should they've been on on this planet a lot longer than we have so speaking of that and this is going to sound like i'm contradicting you but we, mark and i were on a walk and this elderly woman came up to us and, and said please um can you help me i'm like what, what can we do and she said can you call uh, the police because someone locked me in my house and we're like what and she's like well i got away now but they locked me in my house and I'm like, okay, of course. So I called 911 and I 
explained the situation. They asked me the description of what she looked like and where we were. And they said, okay, we know who that is. And she calls, you know, a few times a day or a week. They're like, they're like, somebody will be out. So I stood with her and talked with her um, until the police arrived and they knew her by name. And then by the time the police had got there, her story had really changed a few times and, and gotten pretty wild. I mean, so obviously she's got some dementia or something. Um, but so at the same time, like, what if somebody really was holding her in her house and like she's crying wolf or whatever? And now that that's horror right there. Yeah. Or yeah, maybe, maybe she is kidnapped by somebody <laughs> and like they keep saying it's she, she it's, keeps getting away and they yeah, keep bringing her back yeah exactly so there you go there's a story right there maybe they should trust her maybe she doesn't have dementia <laughs> <laughs> oh i wish that woman well yeah that and that's the thing is that it does happen i mean and that's we do have to deal with that people's minds do leave them and unfortunately sometimes we make um general sweeping sort of ideas and then we don't trust anything any old person says true yes ageism it's yes. real well let's rank this movie on a scale of zero to ten. Zero being you hated it 10 being you think it's a perfect movie Sh- should we use mallows even though we don't know what that means <laughs> <laughs> well like it sounds like marshmallow and so i found like a slang it's like you know a, a, mar- a roasted marshmallow but i'm like i feel like australians I feel like mallow needs to be something else. I don't know. Uh, I, I don't know. Tweet us if you know what it is because yeah. we, we need to know. Yeah. I'm just trying to think what would Grand make right then? Is she really going to roast marshmallows? Okay. Um, yeah. Let's do mallows and I'm going to say seven and a half because I really liked that it was female driven. I liked the atmosphere. There were some really genuinely creepy moments where I made the cre- my face. I have a certain face I make when I see something creepy and um but at the same time i felt like i was ne- never really connected to the characters and i just felt like i needed a little more cohesion and understanding of what was going on no i i agree i'm giving it a 6 and 6 mallows whatever they are um i feel like like i said this movie well, it on paper like give me the premise give me the setting give me the cast it's right up our alley it never got there for me and it wasn't even like a slow build to nothing it was just no build or or i don't even know how to describe the pacing yeah i mean even at the end when you have the the unveiling which is a cool scene but it it's lacking some emotion so and understanding again so um it sort of just kind of fell flat yeah i think that's fair well, we've been watching some things also in our spare time. Uh, my 13-year-old wanted to watch The Walking Dead, so I'm doing a rewatch with him from the beginning, and he's enjoying it very much. And I am remembering all of the reasons why I loved that show, and, and now still, like I realize how, what a special place it holds in my heart, because some of my favorite episodes from that show I think are still some of my favorite episodes of all time of you know television episodes are are you I mean I know Walking Dead's not on currently but are you caught up yeah I am caught up um I know after Glenn died you had a hard time and you didn't um you weren't and uh, uh, so a lot of people did and I know they lost a lot of viewers after that um I kept going and there have been times where I thought I was going to quit and then I stay around and then I'm like, okay, that was awesome. So there are, it's still a good show, but I think that this is sort of one of those examples of a show can possibly go on too long um, because I'm starting to forget, you know, the things that happened 10 seasons ago that I loved and it kind of has become another show in a way, you know? Um, it goes through a lot of of changes, and that's not necessarily bad, but I feel like they should all be their own television shows or something. <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's true. And so I also, I haven't watched um, the spinoffs or whatever, but Campbell's talking about doing those. We'll see. We'll see how, what happens after we make it through the whole series. Now, you said you watched something last night on Shudder. 
Yeah, so I don't know. I just felt like putting something on Shutter. So I put Summer of 84 on, which is from the last couple of years. I mean, pretty recent. Um, it is starring pretty much nobody you might recognize. There's... It's like the guy from Mad Men or something, right? Yeah, that guy. He was like in the office. And, um, and then the girl in it is Betty's sister from Riverdale. That's, that's about (laughs) as deep as I can go with, um, who's in it. And I can tell a lot of Canadians are in it, but, um, I liked it. I thought it was fun. I enjoyed it, but it's one of those movies. It's, um, it's stranger things kind of meets the sort of like up the premise of the burbs. It's more serious than the burbs. Um, but it has obviously the 80s feeling. It's summer of 84. Um, but I was just watching it and feeling like, where is my movie about a group of nerdy girls solving murders? Yeah. I mean, I guess we have to write it. That's what I was thinking. Because I'm just like, this is fun. I like this. And I did. And like I told you earlier, I think you should watch it with Campbell. Because um, first of all, it's not like super... He, of course, he can handle it. He's watching Walking Dead. Um, but it's not like a super gory, horror-filled movie. It's more psychological. Um, I enjoyed it. I thought it was good. But yeah, I was just like, girls were treated how they were treated in 80s movies. And, you know, the girl in it is like a treated like, you know, a sex object because all these guys are 15. And of course, you know, we come to know more about her and they tried but at the same time I was just like I want nerdy girls talking about Star Wars and you know why do all the nostalgia movies there always seem to be boys um so that's that was my complaint but I enjoyed it and I would recommend it and um if you are interested in like serial killers it's like that type of movie okay well I I will definitely check it out I but I am glad that you gave me those things to think about before I start watching it so then my expectations won't be too high. Well, tell us what you're watching, Rewinders. We always are looking for recommendations and uh, give us a shout out on social media or visit our website and make sure if you haven't yet that you pre-order The Science of Stephen King because it's coming up super soon, October 6th. And Meg, what's the date your book is coming out? The Darkest Hunger. I don't know. It's coming out in October, though. Woo! So, yes. So, (laughs) stay tuned for that. Until next time, we'll see you in the horror section. Bye. Fern doesn't have a...